Hi and welcome to the tutorial for getting your retro emulators playing on your Gear VR uh, in the home theater using Silo VR as well as Stream Theater and a couple pieces of software on your PC. So let's go ahead and jump right into it uh, on some of the first piece of software you're going to need. All right, so the first piece of software we're going to need on a PC is a emulator front end called Retro Arch. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to the link to download it. All right, and links are in the description as well. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna click on uh, the downloads page. And we're gonna click on the uh, latest version, which is 1.2.2. All right, I'm on a Windows 64 machine, so I'll click on it. All right, and then I'll go ahead and click on the uh, file. To, I've already downloaded it, so it's asking to rewrite or if it's complete, just show the complete dialog. But it's a 81.24 megabyte uh, file size. So depending on the speed of your internet, it can be the, either really fast or really slow. Just depends. So I've already uh, unzipped it because you'll use click open to unzip it. And when it unzips, it will actually unzip into a folder called RetroArch. All right, so let's scroll down and we're gonna actually open retroarch.exe. All right, so now I've switched over from my mouse to my Xbox 360 controller, which, I'm, which I like to use in RetroArch. Um, I'm a pretty first time user of RetroArch. I found it very confusing the first time I used it and everything was so counterintuitive. And um, yeah, but <laughs> I got used to it and you probably will too. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually load a core. A core is a, uh, it's actually an emulator that you, so it could be a Super Nintendo, Genesis, PSX, whatever. So on my Xbox 360 controller, I'll go ahead and uh, hit the B button for online updater. Then I want to hit the B button again for core updater. All right, so now I want to look for a emulator that I actually want to download and use. I'll scroll down, I'll get a Nintendo 64 emulator. So I'll scroll down till I see a good Nintendo. Here we are, Moopin 64 Plus. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit B button to download it. And I don't know if you saw, but in the bottom left, it was really fast to show the download progress. I downloaded 100%. So I'll hit the A button on the Xbox 360 controller to go back. Then I'll go back again. All right, then I'll go back up to the top and I'll click on load core. All right, and here is that Nintendo 64 core that we just downloaded. I'll go ahead and load it by uh, clicking B button on the Xbox 360 controller. All right, and now I want to load a ROM just to make sure it's working properly. So now I'll go down to load content, hit the B button, select file. And I know I have a ROM or two in my D drive. Guys, please don't ask me where to get ROMs from. It's 2015, you should know this already, seriously. So I go to my D drive, I'll go down to emulators. Then I'll go down to, I know there's one or two in Nintendo 64 folder and go to nine. So I'll go ahead and click on the B button to open it. Now here's the counterintuitive part. <laughs> it says to cancel back to load. Um, and okay to open as a folder. So we're actually just gonna cancel back to load. And that just means hitting the A button on the Xbox 360 controller to load the ROM. And as you see, it loads up just fine. Yep, all right. So I'll close out of it. I'll minimize that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna open up the GeForce uh, Experience program. So this is a, program that comes with your NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, when you install it, you install the drivers, you install GeForce Experience as well. All right. And this is going to open up. All right. So now it's opened up. Um, usually it opens up to my game. So I'll go over to preferences. Then I'll go down to shield. And as you see, it says game stream. Allow this PC to stream games to shield device. This is this is the main component that's gonna be able to push whatever program is on your PC to your phone, thus your Gear VR and Stream Theater. So there's two ways to go about adding the program that we need. Uh, as you see, I already have Virtual Arch added here. So I can either this is the easiest way. Since I already had the RetroArch folder open, I can just drag and drop RetroArch.exe into here. Boom, that'll be it. 
or you can click the plus sign to add RetroArch. You'll navigate to the folder that you actually uh, unzip the program to. Uh, here we are, and we'll click on RetroArch.exe. We'll click open, and that's it. I'm going to click cancel because I've already added it. Okay, so that takes care of that. Okay, so now we're uh, on the phone, and the first thing we need to do is go to uh, Play Store because what we're going to download is Sideload VR. All right, I'm sorry, that's my that's what I'm using to record this uh, screen. Let's see if I can move this little thing out of the way actually here. Oh, whatever. So as you see, I've already installed Silo VR for Gear VR. So I'm gonna click on it. Usually it will say uh, download or install. You'll click install. And once it's done uh, downloading and installing, you'll click on open. And we'll let that spin up. All right, so uh, normally it would open up to, uh, if this is your first time running Silo VR, it will open up to the signature uh, setup. Now the signature setup can be done in two ways, one of two ways actually. There's an automatic setup where you will actually enter in your Oculus uh, email and password. That's what you will use to log into the Oculus forms, or if you're a developer, log into your developer account. It's a totally free uh, sign up. So if you don't have an Oculus uh, account, just go on over to Oculus.com, sign up using your email address, uh, come back here, you'll enter that email and password, and you'll click on Start Automatic Setup. Um, the first time I ran this, it didn't work for me. So I actually had to do the manual setup. And as you see, there's a number of steps that you have to follow. I found it pretty easy, pretty painless. Did it all on my phone. Didn't have to go to my computer or anything. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we'll go back here. And once, uh, once that's done, then you can browse the market. All right. So we'll go ahead and browse the market here. And we'll go to Stream Theater. Okay. All right. So when Stream Theater opens, you want to click this little blue uh, download button here. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to build the APK uh, file. It's going to sign it with your signature that you set up uh, what I was just talking about previously. Um, it's going to sign that APK uh, with your signature in that. So this usually takes a few minutes to do for the sake of uh, time. I'll go ahead and edit out uh, this part and I'll be right back. All right, so now it's downloaded and um, it'll come here and you'll see it says install. You'll click the install. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna install it again. You'll click the install. It'll install to your app drawer. And as you see, Stream Theater, okay? When we come back, we'll go ahead and open up Stream Theater and get into the Gear VR. What we're going to do is we're going to load this into Stream Theater. So uh, let's go to the app drawer, click on Stream Theater. It asks us to insert the device, which we will, into the Gear VR. All right, and it throws us right into the Stream Theater. And as you can see, there's my computer uh, that's connected to NVIDIA Game Stream. So I want to go ahead and select it. And uh, you know, prior to this, you actually did have to set up, I'm sorry, I wish I could show you this, um, but you do have to set up uh, Stream Theater the first time you get in there. Basically what it does, it will just search for your um, any computers nearby on your PC it will ask you to enter a PIN number. It'll match it up with Stream Theater and boom, you're connected to your PC. So I'm sorry I forgot that part because I had already um, completed it. Um, now that we got that covered, when you go back into Stream Theater, it'll uh, recognize your computer, open up to it. Uh, we're going to scroll on over to RetroArch because we're not worried about these games that are currently on my system. We're worried about RetroArch. And it throws you into home theater. We're not ready just yet to uh, get into home theater. There's something else that we have to do that I find it a lot easier setting up in VR theater. So let's go ahead and select it. 
All right, so now we're in VR theater and I'm sitting in front of my computer because this is a one-to-one -one stream um, from the computer to the Android device. So I still have access to my mouse at my desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this. And also at this point, I wanna turn on my MOGA uh, Pro Hero controller. I'm gonna turn that on into mode B as in boy. Okay, and that says that's connected and you know, it's just a lot easier to control Retro Arch using a controller uh, rather than a keyboard, especially when you have the headset on. So I'm going to load a core. And if you call, recall earlier, we did uh, download a Nintendo 64 core, but I want to get really retro with this and I want to go NES. So prior to this, I did download an NES core. So I'm going to load it and then load content, which is your ROMs, select file. I keep my ROMs in my D drive in a folder called emulators, another folder called ROMs, and another folder called NES. And I have a complete ROM set, so I find it easier to use the uh, right bumper to get to where I'm at because I actually want to play Super Mario Bros. 3. And it's a lot quicker than using the, uh, the D-pad. So Super Mario Bros. 3, and I want to cancel back to load it. There we are, Super Mario Bros. 3. So I'm gonna take my mouse and maximize this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to move this into home theater. In order to move this into home theater, we're gonna click on the back button on the Gear VR. And you'll notice the first time that you do it, it actually uh, moves the screen around, it unlocks the screen. So we want to hit it again, and that's gonna lock it and bring up our menu. We want to uh, click on this exit icon and scroll over to home theater and select it. Now we are in the home theater. Look at this. Seats on my right, seats on my left, in front of me. You know, just I feel like a privileged 80, 80s kids and mumsies and dads are, are gone. So pretty much on Montana Max. Uh, those old enough probably get that reference. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's say, you know, I, I actually like this position. I feel more immersed, but let's say you actually want to be closer to the screen. Let's, uh, for example, that chair in the front of us in the middle, you want to move there. You can, let's go ahead and hit the back button on the gear VR, uh, choose the third icon from the left and click on change seat, change seat. We're in the far right in the second row, change seat. We're in the left seat, change seat. We are in the middle seat in the front row and click back again to get rid of the menu. And here we are, seat on the right, seat on the left, seat in the back of me, uh, we are good. And now I'm gonna hit start and start the game. And I'm gonna turn it down because it's probably blasting in your ear. <laughs> so there is sound. Um, and I'm gonna start on the first world and here we are. We are gaming in the home theater retro um, games. And uh, again, this can be done for Genesis or any other decors that are available in RetroArch. Um, additionally, you see this little arrow here that moves with our head movement. We can get rid of that. Uh, let's hit the back button on the Gear VR, click the mouse and turn it off, back button again, and then the mouse on your desktop, just move it out the way. And here we are. All right, ladies and germs. So I hope this has really helped you guys in getting this set up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will try my best to answer them. Um, again, I am no expert in uh, RetroArch. I just began using this emulator about three days ago and it confused the hell out of me the first time I used it. But, you know, I did my leg work and put two and two together and was able to uh, get this working. So I will help in the best way that I know how, okay? All right, until next time, I will catch you guys later. Peace.